This joint hearing of the Environment and Public Works Subcommittees on Chemical Safety, Waste Management, Environmental Justice and Regulatory Oversight, and Fisheries, Water and Wildlife on Understanding the Presence of Microplastics in Water will come to order. As one of our witnesses today, Dr. Sherry Sam Mason said, normal humans looking at a sample of water, if there's visible plastic in it, they'll be turned off. But they don't realize it's actually the invisible plastics present that are the biggest concern. Thank you for sharing that line and I'm allowing me to steal it from you. Those invisible plastics are why we're here today. Like people shed skin cells, plastics shed particles of plastics. These can be big microplastics, which range from half a centimeter down to a micrometer or a micrometer, a micrometer being less than 1 70th the size of human hair, or they can be as small as nanoplastics, which are even smaller than a micrometer. Not surprisingly, we're finding microplastics everywhere, on top of mountains, at the bottom of the sea, in the food we eat, in the air we breathe, in drops of rain, and even drops of our own blood. Microplastics have been found in our livers, our lungs, and the breast milk we feed our babies. Even when folks try to avoid using plastics, products like paper cups and aluminum cans now have plastic linings. This should set off public health alarm bells for everyone because microplastics leach chemicals. Chemicals like endocrine disruptors that affect the reproductive system and are a major suspect in the decline of male fertility worldwide. Chemicals that lead to weight gain. Chemicals that lead to insulin resistance. Chemicals that cause cancer. Congress has taken important first steps to address plastics in our water, like the Microbead Free Waters Act of 2015, based on the research of one of our witnesses, Dr. Mason. This legislation banned cosmetics with intentionally added plastic microbeads that did nothing for consumers, but did pollute our waterways. Since then, we've learned that the problem of plastic pollution is so much more extensive than microbeads and so much smaller, too, in terms of micro and nanoplastics. Microplastics shedding, shed into our water every time we use plastic water bottles. Every time we wash clothing made from a whole series of products that we may not even think of as, as, as plastics, but are plastics. Nylon, polyester, other synthetic materials. Every time it seems that water interacts with plastic. Our water treatment systems filter out many harmful contaminants, but the filters have plastic components that could be inadvertently polluting the water with microplastics. And we can't forget that biosolids from wastewater treatment and agricultural fertilizer also contain microplastics. And when those biosolids are put onto lands, they can run off into our streams and waterways, creating additional plastic challenges which is why I've introduced the Research for Healthy Soils Act to make this a, a high priority research area for the Department of Agriculture. But we need to think better, or we need to think bigger. We need to think about how to stop micro and nanoplastics from getting into the water in the first place, and how to filter them out when they already exist. Thanks to current research on microplastics and microfibers, including work led by one of our witnesses today, Dr. Brander, from Oregon State University. States are starting to act. Legislation was recently introduced in my home state of Oregon that would require all new washing machines sold in Oregon to include a built-in microfiber filtration system. State-led efforts are important, but microplastics don't stop at the state borders, so we also need national attention. Fortunately, we've been joined by a panel of experts today who can help us understand what those national solutions might look like. Dr. Suzanne Brander is an ecotoxicologist and associate professor at Oregon State University whose research focuses on microplastics and how they affect behavior and growth in fish and other water organisms. She is also a co-leader of the Pacific Northwest Consortium on Plastics. Also joining us today is Dr. Sherry Sam Mason, associate research professor and director of sustainability at Penn State Berend in Erie, Pennsylvania. Her research on freshwater microplastics has led to plastics legislation here in the United States as well as other places around the world. And we are joined by Brent Alspath, Patch, Patch? 
Thank you. Vice President and Director of Applied Research at Arcadis, where he oversees their water division's research on drinking water, recycled water, wastewater, and stormwater. Thank you all for taking the time to share your expertise with us.